Florida health officials confirm an anomaly in the state's number of new infection cases. They say it was caused by a seven-week reporting backlog. Florida health officials on Wednesday confirmed over 8,000 new CCP virus infections. But over half of them were due to a seven-week backlog of cases that were released by a lab in a single day. The backlog of testing data came from a lab in Miami dating back to June 23rd. Officials blamed the backlog on problems with reporting. The issues have since been corrected. Authorities said Floridians whose tests were processed by the lab received continuous notifications about whether or not they were infected. But the backlog of cases has severely distorted the state's daily case count data. Looking over the state's virus case numbers from the end of June to August, there are noticeable spikes followed by dramatic drops. For example, according to the New York Times coronavirus tracker, almost 9,000 new cases were reported on June 26th. That number was just 5,000 the day before. The figure hovered around the 9,000 mark for just two days before dropping back down to around 5,000. Another anomaly showed up on July 12th. That day, the state saw a peak of over 15,000 newly reported cases, which plummeted to below 10,000 just two days later. The spike gave Florida the highest single day total of any state since the start of the pandemic, even surpassing New York's record. But no other one-day total for Florida came close to that number again. The striking numbers caused a knock-on effect in the state, most notably leading President Trump to cancel the Republican convention due to be held in Jacksonville this month. And in California, many schools and churches are ordered to stay closed. One pastor is now in contempt of court for violating the governor's orders. NTD's Melina Weiskup brings us the story on why the church plans to challenge what they call the governor's draconian orders. This Californian church has been reopened for over two months with no virus outbreaks, but it's facing a temporary restraining order forcing them to close down. Pastor Rob McCoy, a former council member and city mayor, says it's because the county has been pressured by the state to enforce what they call the governor's draconian orders. I, I, I want my, my children and my grandchildren to live in a nation that's free. Liberty is not man's idea, it's God's idea. And we live in a nation that cherishes liberty. Whether we're Christians or non-Christians or atheists, the one thing we do cherish as Americans is liberty. He says the governor's orders are not supported by data, since in his county only 22 have died out of nearly 40,000 who had the virus. McCoy says he feels called to stand up to the strict restrictions to protect his fellow Americans. And when they, they buy the press and the press is doing their bidding and the pulpits are silent, the, the people are left without understanding and then they're paralyzed by data that just doesn't measure up and then censorship. And, I don't want that for America. So, And he's not backing down. The attorney representing the mayor says the governor has been operating without being checked by the legislature. Uh, this declaration of emergency uh, should be revoked. It should be terminated. And we should be moving on with our lives. McCoy, his staff, and 1,000 church members are now facing legal consequences for attending in-person church services. But instead of this deterring people from the church, more people started going. With a normal attendance of around 400 people, the church now sees more than 3,000. People are sick of this and they're upset. And most of the people that attended would never darken the doors of a church, but are just so tired and they came out to support us. And it was one of the most moving experiences I've ever been a part of. The pastor will go to court next week for his violations, facing fines or possible jail time. But he says it's worth it to preserve his right to worship. Melina Weiskup, NTD News. We've all heard about the president's TikTok ban. Now Nebraska is banning TikTok on all state devices. It's the first to take state-level action against the Chinese app. Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts says Nebraska is banning TikTok on all state devices because of security concerns. He said the Chinese government has long engaged in systematic covert efforts to access sensitive data from U.S. governments, companies, and individuals. As an app owned by a company based in China, TikTok is legally obligated to provide data from its users to the country's communist regime upon request. Governor Ricketts said they made the decision to maintain the security of data owned by the state of Nebraska. Nebraska appears to be the first to ban TikTok at the state level. The Pentagon and the Departments of State and Homeland Security have also ordered personnel to delete the app from government devices. 
Security research firm Penetrum said in a report that TikTok does an excessive amount of data harvesting. And cyber experts say the app acts as spyware for the Chinese communist regime. TikTok has denied the allegations. President Trump issued a ban on the app earlier this month, saying it has to be sold to an American company by September 15th or else it will be shut down. A group of live streamers known as China's Big Stomach Kings are finding themselves at odds with authorities. In the regime's fight against food waste, these online stars are becoming new targets. NTD's Juliet Song reports. A niche of Chinese internet celebrities who built their fame on their enormous appetites is suffering a setback. That's because Chinese leader Xi Jinping is urging the country to stop wasting food. Major video platforms in China now say they'll punish users seen wasting food in their content. In recent years, the so-called eating broadcasts have taken the Chinese internet by storm. Live streamers who eat large amounts of food in a short time gained millions of fans. Unexpectedly, they're often young, slim women. After Xi's speech on food waste, popular video platforms like Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok, said they would punish actions that waste food. The platform even added a feature that, when users search for eating broadcasts or Big Stomach Kings, would return notifications that urge the users to reject waste and eat reasonably. China state-run media, CCTV, also called out the live streamers for wasting food in their broadcasts. These live streamers are now taking a step back. Two celebrities with over 10 million fans on social media have since deleted the phrase Big Stomach King from their usernames. A live streamer who once barbecued an entire camel and with over 10 million fans on social media platforms quietly took down all of his videos. And it's not just pop culture. China's top legislative body says it's working on legislation that reduces food waste. Xi's speech raised questions over the country's food reserves. Chinese authorities said on Thursday they're getting far less wheat this year compared to last. Up until early August, authorities purchased over 40 million tons of wheat from major agricultural areas. That's an almost 20 percent drop compared to the amount of wheat purchased last year. Authorities quote, drop of wheat purchases of five major grain growing areas. This stands in contrast with local reports from the five areas which say they have plentiful harvests and that some areas have even hit historic production highs. In China, local authorities' promotion in ranks are tied to the district's economic performance. Juliet Song, NTD News.